Please give us a brief introduction. Sir, my name is Chinmay Acharya. I am from Kalahandi. I have done my schooling in Kendriya Vidyalaya Bhavani Patna. Uh, class 10th in uh, 2010 and 12th in 2012. Thereafter, I uh, pursued my B.Tech from Government College of Engineering, Kiyomchar, uh, in Electrical Engineering branch. And uh, uh, for one, one year and eight months, I worked in TCS. Thereafter, I am preparing for government services. Mm, so, you, you were working with TCS earlier, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you're a technical person then. So, what, what was your uh, domain in engineering? Electrical engineering. Electrical, okay. So, were you interested for uh, you know, municipal service? Suppose you join as additional engineer or assistant engineer, then you are interested in electronics or assistant commissioner, so, or chief executive officer. How do you think that uh, you know, your talent in electronics uh, engineering? Uh, will be utilized for the betterment of the nation? Sir, uh, uh, today in the urban societies, energy security is also very, very important. So, uh, having a background of electrical engineering would be very much helpful in uh, uh, implementing different uh, government initiatives and schemes uh, related to uh, energy, especially electrical energy, uh, means uh, electrification of uh, urban households and uh, slum developments. Okay, what is uh, with uh, this, uh, uh, like you said about energy security. So, let us take for example, Odisha. Uh, uh, how many municipal corporations we are having here in Odisha? In uh, Odisha, there are five municipal corporations. Five municipal corporations, right. Okay, so let's talk about the capital city, Bhubaneswar. What do you think about it? I mean, um, Suppose you were asked, okay, that what would be uh, alternate sources of energy, or how we can make a arrangement that there are no power cuts in Udnesha. Okay, what would be your advice? Sir, uh, alternate sources of energy, that means uh, renewable sources of energy are very much essential. Uh, because um, accessibility to renewable sources like solar energy is uh, very much helpful in uh, electrification in uh, in areas where uh, it is difficult to uh, lay electrical lines and other, other things mm -hmm. also uh, sir uh, if we provide solar panels to each and every households they will be taking care of their own uh, electrical needs so it will be like uh, uh, lessening the burden on the uh, departments or uh, state government departments to collect uh, uh, fees and uh, other rent, rents for energy. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, apart from uh, energy security, any other thing? Sir, I have um, keen interest in working in the public sector, especially in the uh, administration uh, administration of uh, urban areas, um, especially uh, when it comes to uh, development uh, planning and development of urban areas and uh, uh, environmental aspect of also, also of the urban development. So, uh, I'm keenly interested in working in this domain. Mm -hmm. So, you said that you are basically from uh, which place? Palahandi. Uh, which, which uh, town or city or village? So, I am uh, from a village called Rupra. But I have uh, done my schooling in Bhavani Patna. In Bhavani Patna, right? Yes. Okay, so in Bhavani Patna, there is uh, the most famous deity there. Sir? Deity, goddess. Uh, uh, Ma, Ma Manikeshwari. Okay, and she is uh, basically, uh, you know, tell me something about uh, the temple and other important temples in your district. Uh, the earlier capital of uh, Kalahandi was Junagadh. Uh, uh, the new capital that is Bhavani Patna, the king shifted the capital in 1850 to 1853 mm -hmm. and established uh, Manikeshwari in uh, uh, inside the palace boundary itself and uh, uh, it's uh, it's the architecture is very uh, plain architecture very normal ar architecture means 
uh, whenever uh, any person goes into the temple usually he cannot he or she cannot see the face of uh, the deity uh, because it is quite dark inside uh, the temple only uh, in a specific time of uh, the day that is uh, in the evening time when there is aarti only at that time only one can see uh, one can see her uh, face also there is a famous uh, festival connected with ma manikeshwari that is chhatar yatra that is held uh, annually during uh, uh, the time of dashara where uh, uh, ma manikeshwari uh, uh, means goes to um, one place called uh, jenakhal from uh, her own temple and that jatra is called uh, chhatar yatra where animal sacrifice uh, are being done mm -hmm. Animal sacrifice, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, fine. And uh, this is about, you told about uh, the Hindu religion. So, important mosques, churches, and uh, if you have Gurudwara, Jain temples, Buddhist places, if you have any idea in your district. So, there are small um, uh, mosques and the churches there, but uh, no famous churches or mosques. Okay, fine. So, uh, you told about the king, right? Uh, so it was ruled by which dynasty? Naga Vansi, sir. Naga, yeah. Naga dynasty? Yes, okay. So, what are your uh, service preference for this exam? First, what are your... Uh, the assistant director, uh, assistant commissioner. Assistant director, assistant commissioner, okay, then? Then uh, chief executive officer, then an enforcement officer, then executive officer. Okay. So, Tell me something about, uh, you know, what, uh, suppose you join as an assistant commissioner, municipal, assistant municipal commissioner, okay, uh, what would be your main work? Suppose you are given a, you know, one of the other uh, uh, local bodies and you are an assistant commissioner there, okay, uh, what would be your main, uh, uh, you know, uh, what I can say? focus areas, what would the government expecting you to do? Sir, at least assistant commissioner works under the commissioner, so um, as, means commissioner would uh, give a definite means a department to look after to uh, the assistant commissioner and my um, in means my keen interest would be to look after the uh, urban forestry and uh, uh, the ecological aspect of uh, the urban areas. Mm -hmm. It is my keen interest, sir. So, can you tell me something about the history of uh, you know, this urban local bodies in India, in short, when did it start and which was the first urban local body and uh, if you can say in which state the maximum urban local bodies are there, then you can come to Odisha and then you know the urban local bodies in Odisha, okay, and uh, you can tell much because then we will discuss the problems of the UNPs. The first, um, uh, municipality was established in um, Chennai that, that was uh, then Madras thereafter in Bombay and uh, Calcutta it was uh, established uh, as far as uh, most uh, number of uh, urban local bodies are concerned I am um, uh, not sure but in Maharashtra I think uh, the highest number of uh, ULBs are there um, it, um, it was uh, in the DPSP in, in our constitution where uh, means local administration was given importance but until 1993 um, there was no constitutional provisions uh, as far as uh, means local administration um, whether that is Panchayati Raj or urban local body were concerned in the 73rd and 74th amendment. Uh, it was uh, established, 74th amendment is uh, basically about the urban local bodies where uh, um, actually it, it is uh, in the state domain uh, that is a state subject but uh, the government of India means the parliament of India passed it so as to uh, give a uniformity and um, um, the urban local bodies uh, then were divided into several categories. Uh, uh, means in normal there are uh, according to population NACs are there which are in the transitional small areas 
um, uh, then there are after small ur urban areas uh, we have municipal councils or municipalities in the bigger or the larger uh, urban areas we have uh, uh, municipal corporation also there are uh, other urban bodies like uh, uh, cantonment boards and uh, even there are union territories that are uh, quite urban in nature and they are uh, means they are administered by an administra administrator under the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs of Central Government. In Odisha, there are uh, 114 urban local bodies, 5 municipal corporations are there, 61 um, NACs are there and 48 uh, municipal councils are there. And Bhubaneswar is the largest one uh, in Odisha. Bhubaneswar? Yes. Sir. So, tell me, uh, you know, what is the most important thing, according to you, that uh, a administrator, municipal administrator, should have? So, I mean, it's quality. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, he should be well aware uh, about about the city where he is serving. He should be, uh, he should be uh, like compassionate about uh, serving the uh, population uh, under his service, and uh, he should have keen interest in the development of urban in infrastructure and other uh, uh, subsidiary areas, so as to serve the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, from your experience and what you have studied, okay, currently what are the major problems faced by the municipalities or not only municipalities, any urban local bodies? Four or five can tell. And uh, what reforms are needed in the urban local bodies? Okay. Then we can discuss the programs and all. So, what are the main issues according to you and what, what are the yeah, what are the, what, what may be the solutions according to you? Sir, uh, the, the most important uh, issue or challenge that urban local bodies or any other local government is facing that is uh, autonomy. Uh, right now, financially, uh, the system is such that the urban local bodies are not financially sustainable. They are more dependent on the state government. So, the autonomy is compromised when it, uh, it depends on the state government on the financial matters to a large extent. So it is the most important uh, challenge. Thereafter, we have normal uh, urban problems like uh, uh, the, the um, uh, solid waste management system, uh, also uh, uh, the condition of roads and drainage systems. So all these things uh, are adding to the problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, structurally, so autonomy is one part. Okay. Um, are they, what is it about the financial status? Are they self-sufficient? Sir, uh, they are not totally self-sufficient. They are uh, allowed to have taxes, but the, uh, the income that uh, the urban local bodies generate are not sufficient to meet the expenditure they are um, means, ent uh, means entitled to do, so like um, different investment in different infrastructure projects inside the urban local bodies. So, uh, they are more dependent on the state governments for finance matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what about since you are from technical background, what is the current status of use of technology in uh, you know, urban uh, local bodies and management of urban areas? And uh, suppose you are given the you know, job of uh, using technology in municipal services okay, to deliver uh, you know, efficient and quick service to the people. So tell me what you think 4 or 5 things that you will try to do using technology. So technology brings transparency. Mm -hmm. Also in uh, the 5T program of our uh, state, we have technology as an important parameter. So technology uh, takes the governance system to the doorstep of people. So whenever there is means use of technology, it brings 
helpful it is helpful to the people because like for an example when someone is applying for some marriage certificate or some birth certificate or de death certificate he does not need to go to uh, run to office to office to uh, means register and collect certificate if he has the technology because everyone now has mobile in their hands so if we provide uh, technology that is application so as to uh, do go through online procedure then it, it would be quite helpful for people and governance also would be uh, enhanced thereafter also as transparency is brought up brought out by the technology the corruption aspect also can be uh, minimized because human interference is also minimized with the uh, use, use of technology mm -hmm. okay and uh, are some people uh, ready to use technology like so many people would be like suppose you have to implement this in a slum or something uh, you think that technology can really you know help those people those who are supposed to uh, uneducated let's say i don't know anything any other language apart from oriya can technology really help me uh, in uh, you know getting better service the technology would definitely help but it is not like we will be replacing the orthodox or the old uh, method that we are using right now to uh, means totally replace them with technology technology can be introduced and awareness about the technology can be spread in the uh, slum let's suppose slum areas because the new generation coming in the slum areas also they are well aware about the technology well aware about the I means uses of mobile phones so it can go hand in hand and means gradually there will be a shifting from uh, uh, from the traditional method to the uh, means uh, the technological methods so that would be uh, means technology will gradually uh, replace the old methods. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So uh, this uh, funds to the urban local bodies, the grants which are given, the funds which are given by the government. Um, that is, uh, can you tell me how that process? Uh, what is that process? How much they will give it to? Katakun Sivariti, Bhubneshwar, Dhamma Board. So how do they decide that or does any commission recommend that? So state finance commission advises, uh, means, uh, means gives a, a brief picture about which corporation and how much the state government would share its revenue with uh, the urban local bodies and uh, it is not binding on the state government but uh, it uh, means gives a uh, rough framework about the distribution of resources and accordingly state government uh, allocates funds to the urban local bodies. Okay. So, uh, what are the major areas that uh, you know, administration in a smart city or a prosperity smart city would be looking at? What are the five, at least five areas in general, most important for a smart city from, you know, urban, uh, from ULB point of view, urban local body point of view? First is our governance. So, as um, uh, means, we, if you implement uh, technological methods, so as to improve and if it means make efficient use of technology and improve the governance system. Second is that uh, the solid waste management system, sir. Uh, it needs to be improved in uh, uh, means in picture if you take into account the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. So, uh, that solid waste management system has to be means rejuvenated. The uh, third thing is that sir, street lighting because we need to uh, trace out uh, different black spots in the uh, in so, uh, city so as to ensure safety and security to the citizens living in the urban areas uh, means important uh, light, light means spots to be uh, means highlighted and uh, they would means they there we need to uh, put up lights. Uh, fourth thing is that. Uh, we need to give clean uh, uh, supp means supply clean drinking water to each and every household um, and uh, also that we need to give um, each and every household electricity mm -hmm. okay so uh, tell me uh, if we compare the urban infrastructure that we are having um, you know, in India, and we compare it uh, to, let's say, a fast uh, developing country, let's say, South Korea. 
Okay, or some other country. What do you think that are we at a national level? Are we lagging behind in planning of cities, city planning, and uh, you know maintenance of uh, basic infrastructure, etc. Yes sir, definitely we are lacking behind developed countries like South Korea or Japan or any other countries because there is a lack of comprehensive planning in our uh, approach to urban development. Uh, right now whenever means our approach is like whenever we are facing any problem we are going for the solution but we are not uh, having a sight of an overall picture of uh, let's suppose 30 or 40 years ahead of us and uh, means take a plan into account and implement those pro projects of infrastructure accordingly. So we are definitely lagging in that aspect, sir. Okay. So, what is the most important drawback you see in uh, current system of urban local bodies? Most important drawback which should be changed, sir. Uh, the finance, uh, the fin financial autonomy of uh, urban local bodies has to be uh, means enhanced. They should be given uh, enough resources so as to uh, tackle the local problems at the local level. It should not be like they should uh, means they will be dependent on the state government for even local issues because funds are very much limited uh, to the urban local bodies and for each and every projects they need to look after look at uh, the uh, the state government for finance. So that is something that has to be means uh, structurally changed mm -hmm. okay. so uh, what do you actually mean by cooperative federalism and competitive federalism and uh, at the ULB level what do you think how this concept will be applied so cooperative federalism is the concept where uh, the center and the state cooperate with each other in different domains uh, to tackle problems and uh, take the nation ahead. And competitive uh, federalism is the is a concept where each and every state competes with each other to show better performance in in each and every um, uh, field. So in this way, the competitive uh, federalism gives a competition to uh, progress in a much faster way so that is very much helpful so if we implement that in our urban local bodies there will be competition in uh, means amongst the different urban local bodies to outperform each other so in that uh, race they would be definitely bring uh, good progress and prosperity to each and every urban local bodies okay so now coming to some of the schemes. Uh, can you tell me some of the important urban local body ULB schemes which are being now implemented in Odisha? Sir, AHAR is one scheme where uh, the government gives subsidized uh, meal to um, people in the urban areas. Uh, Amrit Amrut uh, is another scheme mm -hmm. uh, of central government. Um, of that's just I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, something which is specific to our state, our state government scheme for urban renewal or urban development. Uh, Right now, sir, uh, in means uh, yesterday's news, I uh, read about uh, Odisha Municipal uh, Premier League. So there would be competition between different urban local bodies in terms of uh, in terms of tax collection. So that that is one. And uh, AHAR has been said means it is also a state government initiative of uh, providing uh, affordable uh, food to people. From that point of view, uh, can you tell me something about the options which have uh, been uh, taken in India or which have been experimented in India with respect to one of the most important dimensions of uh, urban okay, city or town management that is uh, transportation, public transportation. So in that you can tell me what all the things you know and uh, what has been our uh, experience with MRTs 
okay, mass rapid uh, transport systems in the urban areas. You can give some examples. What have we done in Odisha also we can tell at last? Sir, uh, uh, in, in this century, sir, we, there is a race of uh, implementing the metro system in um, in as, as many cities as possible. Uh, starting from, uh, it was started in Kolkata in 1984, the metro system. And after the implementation of the metro uh, infrastructure project in Delhi, there is a horde of uh, implementing in, uh, it in different cities. Right now, a very large number of cities are uh, having, uh, means undergoing the construction of metro systems. Also in uh, Mumbai, uh, there, there is one uh, new system that is a mono, monorail system uh, that is only limited to Mumbai only. Uh, but uh, the bus transit system is there in uh, most of the uh, cities. Uh, also in Bhubaneswar that we have uh, means bus, uh, town bus system. So that provides uh, means uh, economical uh, uh, transportation to the people at large. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, tell me about, uh, you know, the preferred transport, the mass transport system here in, uh, let's say, capital city and it has also been, uh, you know, quite uh, successful in a sense of something like people have or other movements in international organizations have uh, said that it is quite good. You know, can you tell me something about it? The so, MoBus system is uh, implemented in Bhubaneswar and it is well recognized by the central government also because recently uh, MoBus system means MoBus organization that was conferred with some prize by central government. Okay, so uh, you know, apart from that we have seen that uh, many other uh, you know places they have uh, other uh, systems like uh, metros and all. What do you think uh, for Bhubaneswar or even for Aurkela, Sambalpur? Uh, should uh, the government think of a metro in Bhubaneswar or it is not required? Sir, uh, as far as feasibility is concerned, Bhubaneswar is not that large to accommodate a metro system. But yes, we can uh, have a metro system that is connecting uh, means Katak with Bhubaneswar and uh, uh, that would be feasible. But Still, Bhubaneswar is not that uh, large enough to accommodate a metro system here. Okay. So, now coming to your, uh, some of the current uh, events which are happening. So, what is the point of view of the government, okay, in face of the anti-CA uh, protests? What, what, the, what is the stand of the government? Are they reconsidering it or what, what are they saying? No, sir. Uh, government is not uh, backing down from its stand uh, as far as CA is concerned. It is uh, means quite, uh, means in its uh, standing, it is uh, standing with the CA, uh, means Citizens, Amend uh, Bill, Citizens uh, Amendment Act, it is sta standing with it and it, uh, the Home Minister has clarified that it is not going to back down from its uh, standing. Okay. okay. So, uh, overall, uh, if we see, what is your uh, opinion about the government's handling of the entire situation? First is the Act in itself. So, today something was there related to this Act. Uh, are you aware of that? The Supreme Court uh, is going to hear about uh, the bunch of petitions filed against the CAA. Okay. So whatever that we will know today, what the Supreme Court has to say, but uh, the government handling of the situation, what more uh, could the government have done? Sir, uh, prior to uh, bringing, on, uh, bringing that bill into the parliament, government should have uh, made an outreach to the people and uh, they should have communicated about uh, their uh, intention of bringing that bill. Um, apart from that, even after bringing that bill and getting it passed from the parliament, they should also engage with the uh, protesters uh, because protesters are not only limited to uh, one city or two, they are quite uh, spread out in different parts of our country. So, 
uh, it is the means uh, duty of the government to engage with those protesters and communicate and have a dialogue with them so as to um, establish a dialogue because dialogue is a very important aspect of democracy and when there is no dialogue between the uh, government and the citizens uh, it would be creating a gap between people and the government mm -hmm. okay so apart from that uh, there is a there is some controversy now regarding the statement of a south indian uh, actor can you tell me what I am referring to? Sir, Rajnikanth uh, made some uh, statement with regard to Perrier. So, that is... What was the full name of Perrier? I do not know, sir. Ramaswamy, right? Yuri Ramaswamy. Uh, so, can you tell me something about him? No, sir. What was his contribution? To I do not know, sir. Okay, okay, fine. But what is this controversy about that you know something about it or not? Why no, he sir. said... No. Okay, fine. Um, so coming to defense, so recently, uh, you know, some uh, defense, major defense uh, capability has been uh, tested, uh, and we have stationed a very uh, strategic uh, force in one of our border areas um, with the eye of China. Can you tell me what I am talking about? Recently, sir, DRDO. Uh, means uh, had a trial of K4 missile uh, that is the anti uh, anti submarine missile I think sir because it is used in the sea and uh, is it uh, nuclear capable? Yes sir. Mm -hmm. What is this concept of nuclear triad? We always hear the nuclear triad, triad. But what is this concept of nuclear triad? So triad means from land, sea, and uh, sky. Hmm. So, whenever we say, I mean, say nuclear triad means we have the capability to uh, means have means weapon, weapons from both uh, means from uh, lands, uh, from any aircraft or from any aircraft ca carrier. So, that is basically nuclear triad. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, you are interested for this, uh, you know, municipal uh, administrative job. So, do you know that how many services are there under government of Odisha, which are related to municipal services? That means, uh, basically, according to the new municipal act, this is one service you are applying for, that is Odisha municipal administrative service. Similarly, are there other services also? Sir, so local fund uh, also comes under municipalities. Mm -hmm. Local local fund audit service, I think. And uh, I do not know. Do you have services like municipal engineering services? So engineer is a post, yes. Uh, health, city health uh, officer is also there. City engineer is also there. Mm -hmm. um, chief auditor is also there in municipal corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in our urban planning, uh, we have separated the planning part mm -hmm. and the maintenance development part. So there is a development authority and there is a municipal authority. Yes, For example, let's say BDA, and, BDA BMC. and BMC. So why, why this separation? And was it, uh, uh, you know, originally was it thought of? I do not know about uh, BDAs. Okay, no, not BDA. Means, what means, is the reason for uh, two separate uh, one a planning and one a development uh, authority? What are the, what is the difference in the functioning of or you can say that the major uh, roles these two play? Okay. I do not know, sir. Okay, just go through the functions. Okay, of the Some BDA and the BMC. Hmm. Not BDA and BMC. Any the difference in the domains? Yes, yeah, sir. Difference in the. Uh, approach a uh, difference in the functions maybe okay but otherwise why we have two different things right so both of them are important part of city administration hmm. so that part is there okay fine so suppose uh, you are assistant uh, director of municipality and you get uh, you are asked to you know uh, give a status report on how to accommodate these uh, small areas what you call roadside vendors they are encroaching on government road okay 
Supreme Court has ordered that with this encroachment of public roads should be dealt with, mm -hmm. you have to take them out. At the same time, in the order it's also that these people have to be rehabilitated. Okay. And uh, so what are the considerations that you will, you know, what recommendations you will give and why? So on one hand, you have to clear the government land, okay, especially the side of the roads. So that is a little bit easy, but still then what would be your strategy, number one. And what are you going to do of these people? Because these are basically roadside businesses. They need a good place, otherwise if you take them to some field or some thorough place, they are not a business. So at the same time, they will get a lot of people without, you know, hampering the city. So, what would be your suggestion? Sir, uh, first of all, um, the government means the urban local bodies has to talk with uh, those people who are uh, having the, those pending zones al alongside the roads. And uh, without the cooperation, it would be uh, means uh, difficult for also uh, the municipalities to relocate them. So, with proper cooperation between uh, the vendors and uh, the municipalities, can relocate them to a means because municipalities have space within its territories uh, where it can uh, construct any uh, commercial uh, market marketplace so it can talk with those vendors and can relocate them to those uh, places for their convenience also it would be uh, means commercially viable for uh, the urban local bodies to relocate them and to make them uh, uh, their vendors in the commercial zone and uh, pay uh, means user fees or rent or taxes according to uh, accordingly, so it would be commercially viable for the urban local body also, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So that will be the end of the interview. Thank you.